Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. It's me, Stormy Grace, sitting in for Miss Nadia Shaw this week, bringing you your weekly horoscope for the week of July 14th. And what a week we have on our hands. It's nothing too crazy, but we're definitely going to talk about all the energy that is piling up. Now, before we jump in, remember, you can check the description box down below for the timestamps taking you to every day of the week as I have broken it down. So if you've got a big presentation on Wednesday, which I hope you do since it's a Mercury day, you have a little wind in your sails, uh, you can just click down below, go right to Wednesday and see what Wednesday has to offer. All right, beautiful friends, let's jump in and talk about what is going on. So as we're coming into the week, this week on the 14th on Sunday, first of all, we're coming in with the moon in a void, of course, position all the way until 8.52 a.m. So first of all, and that is mountain time, Colorado time. So first of all, what it means is that as we're coming in this week, we're coming in in a much more reflective position. Last week, the moon was in Leo and we were coming in like we were coming out. You know, it was very good. So we're coming in in more reflective this week. So going on the inside job. Now remember when the moon is void, of course, first and foremost, it is a reminder that the universe is kind and pushes the pause button. So it's time to rest. Now for some of you, you might be like, Stormy, I am not up at 3 a.m. girl. Move on. Where's the moon when I'm up? I get it. But we also have soulmates around the world who work dif different shifts or at different times. So we want to take care of them too, okay? So if you're one of our soulmates that is working or you're up for whatever reason at that time, you never know what life's going to throw at you, right? It is not the time to force things forward, start something new. It's time to be very present with what is and work with what is because the energy is flat at that time. I love one of my favorite astrologers says the energy is flat. I love that. So there's just not a lot that's going to support anything maintaining its weight after the moon goes out of that void of course position, which it will do at 8.52 a.m. Again, that's Colorado time when the moon is going to shift into Scorpio. So now at least the energy has got a little, a little texture to it, but it's still in Scorpio, very much so internal. We're much more introverted. We're going into our own vulnerability. The questions that happen every month when the moon comes back to Scorpio position is what really are my motives, not my intentions. What do I intend to do here? That's not very useful. When the moon is in Scorpio, I want to know what is in my motives because an intention is an unresearched motive. Be clear. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I saying what I'm saying? Where am I driven to do a particular thing? And sometimes I didn't even know that I was driven towards that thing. Subconsciously, something's coming up for me. I'm really driven to art. I'm really driven to attach to my, apart my partners these ways. You know, what is it that is motivating you? But there's a certain amount of intensity that comes with it when the moon is traveling through Scorpio. It's considered to be in fall because we're going to go so deeply and it's like taking your emotions and allowing yourself to fall into yourself, but with a really good guide, because even if you fall into the darkness of those motions all the way down there in the ushy stuff, Scorpio is the best guide because it knows the way out and knows the way back to the light. So enjoy this journey as Scorpio is traveling here. Enjoy the intensity. Enjoy that contemplation that comes with this as well. And for those of you who have a moon in Scorpio, remember this is your lunar return. So look at your lunar return charts. What are the signatures emotionally for the next month that are coming up for you and calling your attention to them? Okay. Then as we get into Monday, we've got a lot of energy. The moon is still traveling through that vibration of Scorpio. So we're already coming in more introverted, more in connection to our own vulnerability. And then we're going to see the sun come into a square with Chiron. Now, as these two are squaring together, first of all, the square is the 911 of the astrology aspect. So it's like it creates the square and you are here. Okay, you are here <laughs> in the square and it's square squishing you. So with a square, you're going to need to do something to get out of the square because you don't want to be squished. That energy is too tense. We don't like it, right? This is a cardinal square. So you're being asked to make a fresh start 
somewhere. Now, as the sun is squaring against Chiron, first of all, what I think it does here is that the sun is motivated to bring light, heat, life, vitality, new energy to our emotional lives, to what makes us feel secure, to how we nurture and nourish ourselves and others, to what we would be willing to really call home, right? But as it squares against this Chiron, Chiron is the wounded healer, but it's also our greatest teacher. So one of the things to remember is that over this last couple of years, Chiron traveling through the vibration of Aries, we have done so much to heal, repair, and change uh, our identities. Aries, the identity, what we derive our self-being from. And so we're not moving from an old wounded identity that we have carried before. Instead, even if the wound isn't all the way closed up, it's very much healed. There's a good coating and maybe a nice scab over it, something that doesn't have it gaping and leaking itself all over your life anymore, where you're making decisions looking from the lens of the wound. Now you're looking from the position where the wound is kind of healed. But as the sun squares against this, it's it's a moment where I think we go, I don't know if I actually deserve to have fill in the blank thing because I remember my past. Maybe I'm still that past version of myself. It's almost like you have a moment where you lack your self forgiveness in some way. Right. And this is we're already quite tender with the moon traveling over here through Scorpio. So there is this sense of I doubt myself. I doubt the future. I doubt I'm in doubt in some way, shape or form. Now, something else that I really thought about as I was looking at this transit on Monday is that really, truly, if there is something in your life, maybe it's something that you did or happened in the past and you're like, I really need to reach out and set that thing right. I really need to make that apology. I need to give something back to someone that only I can give them. Monday may be where you're having the acknowledgement that this needs to happen and you're feeling your feelings around that, right? Feeling what it feels like when we take something from someone that only we can give them. But I don't think that Monday is the best day to pick up the phone and make that phone call or to deliver something back to someone because right behind that, we're going to have the Mars and Uranus conjunction. And I do think that this is a big bolt of energy. And that is really, that's really the vision, right? We've got Mars, we've got all of this heat, and then we've got Uranus, all of this electricity, and we're going to just squish those two up against each other and let's just see what happens. And so typically what happens, the word is break. We have a break break. Those two will break down something that has been in the way. Now, the nice thing is that it's in Taurus. So what it's breaking down, breaking free from, having a breakthrough around, it's already been here for a while because Taurus is a fixed sign. So go to 26 degrees of Taurus in your chart. What have you been trying to get past? What have you been trying to you know, you're like, I need to, to change this and I just can't quite get it out of the way. You know, it's literally the area of your chart where you've been trying to just pick up and move a mountain. And it's like, well, that's pretty impossible. So what do you do? Mars and Uranus come split that mountain in half and you've got a path to walk through the middle. So that's very much so kind of the idea around this energy. But Mars and Uranus are Mars and Uranus. Mars is inflammatory and Uranus is down for whatever. So we have an opportunity to be particularly impulsive. So you get this feeling, I really should set this right with someone or I really need to do this thing over here. That will make everything all right. And you just go for it and it does not come out the way that you thought it would. I would not on Monday be doing those things. Instead, I would like let the energy of this kind of revolutionary, stimulating, breaking through kind of vibration of Mars and Uranus create that path so that you can walk down it confidently, well-researched in your motives and with, um, with humility as the days come you know, later in the week. Monday would not be my day for it. The other thing to be thinking about is because these two can be impulsive, 
I would be watching out for decisions that you're making that day where it's like, yeah, no, absolutely. I need to buy this thing today. It has to be today. It's right now. I feel it in my soul. You know, like your soul is telling you, you actually need it. And, and it might not be your soul telling that you that you really need it. There is a recklessness to this. There's just such a fire that comes with it where we get to fully express something new about ourselves and obstacles get out of the way. And that's great. The good path, but also we just do things that we can't undone. The last thing I want to say about Monday and in, a, in the few days to follow under the Mars Uranus conjunction is that beware of saying things that will change the course of your life for years to come. And I'm talking about saying the kind of things that an apology will absolutely never set right. Okay, so Monday just is a day to be a little bit more aware, but it is also a day to be excited. There is something being broken down, breaking through. There is a break coming that will push things forward, even if it doesn't look like your favorite way to have experienced that particular transit. Okay. Now on Monday, we're also going to see Jupiter enter into its pre-retrograde shadow time at 11 degrees of Gemini. And this is going to begin this particular retrograde cycle, which is going to come to its complete end post-retrograde shadow time on April 30th of 2025. But the thing to take note of of here on Monday is that between now and October 9th, when Jupiter actually takes its retrograde, everything that comes into your container of learning, of wisdom, of opportunity between 11 degrees of Gemini and 21 degrees of Gemini, everything coming in now will be what you review. So you can literally go to your journal and say, okay, what opportunities, what growth, what teachers, what new philosophies came into my life between July 15th and October 9th. And you will review those during the retrograde cycle. It's one of the things I love about astrology is just track your patterns, track your life, track exactly what's coming in, because then you know, you, you already have the uh, study guide for the test when we go through the retrograde cycle. So I invite you to uh, grab a journal, write down what's coming into your life, take a little bit of note or make a really good list on your Google calendar, keep great records so that as we do travel in that retrograde from October until February, um, you can see exactly where you are reviewing. As we get to Tuesday, we are still going to be traveling with that moon in the vibration of Scorpio. We've got Mars and Uranus having just had their conjunction and yes, they're going to already begin the journey of separating in that aspect, but there's still this like high vibe energy just kind of going around us, right? When we get later in the day, however, uh, 7.10 to 7.24 p.m. Mountain Time, we're going to have another short void, of course, moon period. And I would encourage you, whatever you're doing, set a timer in your phone, put it down, put down what you're thinking about, put down what you're doing. If you can, just give yourself those few minutes to just rest, to let it go, shake off the day, shake off the moment, get in alignment with however you get centered and with whatever you call a higher power, the universe, anything like that, and just give yourself a minute, okay? Now, right behind that, we'll see the moon shift into Sagittarius, and now we're heading in a different direction, okay? We're moving up and out. We're no longer internally doing the brooding, doing the review, being vulnerable, going deep into our interior selves, which is delicious and important. And now we're going to travel in our enthusiastic Sagittarius sign who wants to take all the new emotional truths we've just learned as we've reviewed them through Scorpio. And it wants to go find a different way to express itself. It's like, well, now that I know that about myself, or now that I've had that experience or acknowledged that, what can I do with it? What adventure is that going to take me on now? What new pathway can I go down with this particular information? So when the moon is traveling for this next few days through Sagittarius, it's a great time to, first of all, ask yourself with everything that you've learned, is there something you need to be more truthful um, about with yourself? Is there a different truth that you're ready to tell? Now you're ready to go set that amends right, or you're ready to head down this new path because now you see this is actually the path for me. The other thing is, what is the adventure you would like to go on when you stop for two and a half days with the moon in Sagittarius? What is your heart saying? I just want to see something else. 
I want to I have a different experience. Maybe you just want to try a dish with coconut milk that you've never had, right? Or uh, Sagittarian herbs are like sage and saffron, mint, nutmeg. You want to try a dish that's got something a little different. Do it. Allow yourself to experience the Sagittarian area of your chart as it lit up by the moon and maybe having the taste of a little mint in your mouth. Can you tell I'm such a Taurus? <laughs> maybe you have a little mint in your mouth and it gives you a different adventure experience of your own emotional body and content. Really enjoy that. Try it out this week. Let me know if you do, if you try something new, you try something different and how does it work with your emotional body? And the good news is you'll have all of that energy with the Sagittarius moon to keep traveling with on Wednesday. We'll also see that the moon is going to come into an opposition with Jupiter. But a moon-Jupiter opposition is really nice because I think it actually still lends itself to a bit of freedom. You know, your moon is like, I've, I've discovered all these new truths and Jupiter is like, yeah, okay, let's talk about it. Let's write about it. Let's not be out here making all of these decisions. Instead, let's just pour that information out. And that's the best integration of an opposition. Instead of just holding on to your truth and then thinking, thinking, thinking about it and letting that opposition get wider, this is a way that we integrate both that Gemini and that Sagittarian energy and we bring our truths into writing. We bring our truths into expression. And as we do that, we get to experience this emptying out, this sharing of our story, this witnessing of our lives. And ultimately, that's a step towards the internal uh, freedom. You know, the Native Americans talk about being the hollow bone. And I think that that's a really beautiful expression of the integration of both of our communication um, signs coming into conversation. As we get to Thursday, the moon is still traveling through our playful Sagittarian energy, taking us on an adventure. And thank goodness, too, because the sun and Uranus are going to come into a sextile. And one of the greatest adventures I think we can ever go on is the adventure to change our patterns or change our routines in some way. And the sun and Uranus sextiling each other brings this positive energy where now we're like, yeah, I just I want to do something different. I want to try something new. I want to go down a different road. I want to experience maybe even life down this new path that Mars and Uranus has opened up earlier in the week and see if the, if my freedom is down there. I think it's a beautiful aspect as well because the level of self-awareness that I think is available under this particular sextile, it's like, you know what? I know what I need. I can intuitively know and tell and feel what I need. And I have the courage to move forward towards it because I believe that my freedom actually lives on the other side. It's an entirely stimulating aspect. Uranus always is. It's a curious and creative aspect as well. So what are you going to be doing here on Thursday that steps you outside of your comfort zone or outside of the box you've been in just a little bit and gives you an opportunity to break from your routine? break from a set of habits, break from an old belief system that doesn't actually encapsulate your freedom of you being able to move. Now forward. to help with that, we've got Mercury coming into a trine with Chiron just behind that. Now this is our second Chiron interaction for the week. And as Mercury is coming into that trine with Chiron, this is a healing conversation. I need some talk therapy going on a little bit here. I need to share my story. I need to be heard in some way, shape or form. I need to hear the stories and the experience of other people. Because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes for me, when I'm going down a new pathway, it's like, I know that there's freedom over there, but it doesn't stop me from going, yeah, but how do I do this? I don't understand that. And then someone shares their experience of, you know, how they did it. And for me, it just opens my heart. It opens my willingness to continue to walk a new path and have these experiences. It opens my mind to the discovery of what's down there, who I'll become, what the journey will be. And I think that Mercury trying in Chiron is very much so that particular experience. Now, it's not always that you're going to be the one doing the listening. Just as much on Thursday, you could be the one who is speaking. This is Mercury trying Chiron, your communication planet, trining the place of your new identity. You're not that old identity anymore. You're not just working from the wound. So who's going to show up in your world or you're being called to share your story with someone else because they're struggling or they're afraid they don't see the path.
pathway forward and you're like, oh yeah, no worries. I know how to do that. I was in the same position you are and I can tell you exactly what I did if that will work for you and how I got to the other side. So it's a great day to kind of see this um, new identity the liabilities, the assets, the whole experience come full circle and some kind of encapsulated, beautiful, listening experience. And this is kind of a beautiful energy leading us into Friday where we're going to come into another void of course moon period from 1.58 a.m. until 2.13 a.m. Colorado time. You've got a time to rest. Remember, the universe gives pauses. So take the pause rest the energy is kind of foggy sometimes the discernment is a little bit foggy but the rest the ease the being in the flow of letting things fall and get ready for the next iteration of where the moon is going to go is really very very much so a gift and it's also a great time for you to examine what is your relationship with rest what is your relationship with receiving or being in ease this is a great time to explore those concepts now just behind that the moon is going to get into capricorn so we're ready to get organized now we've seen the way that new pathways this this week have opened up we've had changes of heart changes of perspective maybe even changes of philosophy or beliefs about ourselves, we've maybe needed help or someone has shown up and needed our experience to help them and now as the moon goes into Capricorn we are getting organized we are getting organized we're going okay hold on how do I ground down how do I root to rise you know how do I structure my life how do I structure my emotions in a way where I can build legacy with them where I have something solid underneath my feet that I can actually stand on? Where do I just need to be mature? Where do I need to come to the other side of some stabilizing long-term maturity? Where have I matured emotionally? And I think that this is one of the beautiful things about getting older as well is the ability to look at emotionally how you've matured year by year by year. This is a beautiful time to reflect on that. Every uh, every month when the moon comes into Capricorn, take a look at this. Where have you created more growth, more grounding for growth, more emotional stability and maturity and more depth within those concepts Um just from month to month, certainly looking back from year to year. Either way, as the moon's here in Capricorn, we're also ready to engage in a little bit of that earth magic, be in the material realm as material beings. Now, we're going to see that Venus is going to come into a trine with the north node and come into a sextile with the south node. I really like this energy because given being called to maybe share our stories or share experience um, just a couple days before, this is a space of contracts, of karmic and soul contracts. Literally, your next set of soulmates is showing up under this energy. The nodes are pulling us to and from uh, the contracts we need to be engaging in. So I think this is beautiful. With Venus in that trine to the north node, there's a pocket of opportunity, but we have to take the opportunity on. This one's not just coming to us easily. We have to go to it, right? So as you're going to it, are you moving with love? Are you moving with grace? Are you moving um, with a sense of being willing to practice receptivity. That's a choice we get to make. But Venus's sextile to that south node over here in Libra is an opportunity for us to take action, intelligent action on relationships from the past. So we talked a little bit earlier in the week. Did you find out I need to clean something up? I need to set something right. I need to get on a different course. This is an aspect that shows us that it is okay to move forward with love. It is okay to move forward and give love, to receive love. It is okay to move forward in the abundance of not having to hustle, but simply letting opportunities come to us to set them right as well. Now, we're going to see this aspect again when we get to October 23rd. So make a little bit of note and what is happening, what is healing, what is becoming abundant and harmonized for you right now. Now, when we get to Saturday, 
Saturday, we still got that Capricorn moon, but we're going to see Mars come into a sextile with Neptune. Now, again, this creates a pocket of opportunity that we intelligently take action on. So Mars being our action planet and Neptune being our planet of allowing the intuition to really flourish, allowing the world of the fantasy and the dreams and the ideals to move in between the worlds. As these two come together, first of all, my my first word is creativity. It's inspiration. It, there's a spiritual piece about it. And we're in action to bring it into our lives. So really Saturday to me has such a resonance with forgiveness. It's like forgiveness. It is that I can't have new I can't have a new garden if I don't let some water in, right? Sometimes we have to have a breakdown. We have to cry before we have a breakthrough. So this is an opportunity to kind of re-wet the garden, build something beautiful out of these um, compatible elements that are coming together, but we're taking action, inspired action, intuitive action, forgiving action, compassionate, charitable action to bring this to flourishing. And again, I'm really curious this week, um, for those of you that this may happen for, are you showing up in some capacity where you're literally like telling your life story or something like that? And it acts as a means of service to someone else. You're saying, I was in debt once and I used this program or I took this path and this is how I came to the other side. And you're just sharing with people. You don't want anything from them. You're just sharing. You know, are you in recovery of some kind of variety? Are you helping another parent? What is it that is this beautiful, inspired um generous piece that is showing up so share that with us in the comment section down below okay now before we end the day on saturday we're gonna see mars leaving that taurus territory i kind of like it it's mars is like yeah i went over there and disrupted uranus's piece did my thing i'm out <laughs> so mars is gonna come into the energy of gemini at 2 42 p.m mountain time so now with mars in gemini this is the other thing i feel like when mars leaves taurus and gets into Gemini, he's like, I'm free. Oh, I'm free. You know, because in, in Taurus, Mars can't just do what it wants as fast as it wants. It's like, Taurus, are we, you know? But in Gemini, now Mars has a little bit of movement because we've moved Mars into an air energy. However, the thing you do want to be mindful of with Mars in Gemini is that Mars, you can even see it in its glyph. It's got the arrow pointing one direction. I want to go over there, okay? So Mars in Gemini, Gemini has now been moved to a double sign and in air. So Mars is being asked to do multiple things at once, which is not always the preferred way of doing things. However, the decisions that you make will have a duality to them. The actions that you take will have a duality to them. So while Mars is in Gemini, one thing I think is one, yeah, make space to be doing multiple things at the same time, but also make a little bit of space to need to do one thing more than one time because you were doing more more than one thing at one time. <laughs> But there will be a swiftness. There will be a fair amount of movement as our action planet gets into Gemini. Now learning something, teaching something, going on short distance trips, um, sharing information, going out in a social group, doing things with your siblings. These could all be things that start to present itself as we experience Mars's beautiful transit, busy transit here through Gemini. All right, my absolutely beautiful friends, I hope you have a gorgeous week. Please connect with us in the comment section down below. I will be checking comments all week as well. So I look forward to connecting with you. And don't forget that the timestamps are in the description box down below, along with uh, a beautiful list of offerings of courses and classes that are coming up at Synchronicity University. I love you guys. Have a great week. <laughs>